It's a given. If they get the farm out, Magnus gets the blink, BKB at some point a refresher. You have an empowered gyro to worry about. Right. That is, there's few late game team fight combos that can beat that. Now, it is a little risky as far as the laning stage goes, though. They have already the Nyx, who's not the strongest laner, couple it with a mag. And I'm wondering if they actually want to run this mag mid, because it's been, I'd say, more often than not, they hear that Dendi plays, but mag versus Shadow Fiend is not a great matchup. Even if you don't die, Shadow Fiend will basically get free farm, and they don't have the best gankers. Disruptor, Nyx, they gank well in the mid game, but they don't gank well in the very early laning stage. They both need levels. They don't have that high of damage output early on, so... I'm wondering now, maybe this is actually a Funic Magnus. They're going to run Nyx Disruptor support, and then they pick another core for mid. But no, Wyvern. I was wrong. They go Wyvern. So they do go for support, so it looks like probably Dendi Mag, Funic Nyx, and then Wyvern Disruptor Gyro as uh, as the tri laner. Or, or maybe they move one of those supports around. Yeah, the laning phase should be should be interesting. Vega Squadron, I feel like it does have a fairly well-rounded lineup. Um, the addition of Clockwork again, being able to put Blink Daggers on cooldown, that of course works for Nyx and Magnus both now. But the, they have to be so careful about how they take, take their fights. Like if Clock is able to land a, a good hook and a good cog on, I don't know, if he's able to get the gyro, you know, you have a Shadow Fiend, a Shadow Demon, and a Leshrac who are going to want to rush at least to the to the periphery of the fight. If not, Shadow Fiend either blinking in or running in looking for an ult with a BKB. But the moment you start to do that and really utilize the fact that Clockwork can take a fight and try to split it in half, you're naturally going to be grouping up, especially if you're trying to come through the woods or come through come uphill or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be very risky how Vega takes these fights. And like you said, going late, I mean, it's always an option. Shadow Fiend's certainly an excellent late game hero. But Navi's really good in that department, and trying to go late against Havost on a gyro, always risky. Winter Wyvern is also an excellent late game support because he has a BKB piercing disable. Mm -hmm. um, he can keep teammates alive pretty well. And obviously, as mentioned, they already have the Magnus gyro duo. So I, I think Navi right now has, to me, the late game edge, assuming relatively even farm and, and levels. The one thing I, I'm wondering is why Winter Wyvern in this game? Because I, I feel like one of the really important reasons to pick this hero is when Cold Embrace is really good, where right. you're not taking any physical damage. That's not, well, I was going to say it's not really the case here. Now they pick Dazzle, who's more about that physical damage, but really, Vega have so much damage. They got triple raise, the Clockwork Rocket, the hook shot as well. You're looking at Lashrak, who's all magic damage. Shadow away from Dazzle off the Disruption. Well, that that's physical, but yeah, it is, it is more just burst damage right. in general. And I, I guess they, I think... They're picking it more for just the hero zoning potential as well as the ultimate, but it, I don't feel like the Cold Embrace really offers you all that much this game. It's a lot of burst, a lot of magic damage on Vega. I've seen him like three times so far in this patch, and the game says he felt effective. Well, wouldn't be done without pauses. A uh, quick one as art style needs to get water or go pee or... I don't know, something along those lines. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm AC, joined by LD for the hype cast. Navi leads this uh, best of two series, one to nothing, looking to make it a clean sweep, while Vega really need to put one in the win column. They're already beginning to separate down towards the bottom of their group. It's still very early, still a lot of games left to be played when, before all is said and done, but they don't want to find themselves behind after just this, uh, this first day slash night. And, I mean, we've, we've kind of broken down uh, their lineups. How do you think the lanes are going to shape up now that we see who's going to be playing on who? I mean, so so it's going to be Dendi Mag mid. Shadow Fiend wins this matchup convincingly, mm -hmm. uh, unless there's supports involved. Um, Havos Gyro headed to the safe lane. Funix going to be off lane. Nix. I I don't think Navi's lanes are. I think their safe lane should go fine, but I I feel like they're going to lose the off lane and mid most likely. You've got mm -hmm. Shadow Demon Lash plus a Dazzle. That is insane kill potential. Honestly. It wouldn't shock me if Vega go aggressive tri lane because they have the potential to win all three lanes with that. Clock can beat Nyx 1v1. I would say at best it's even for Nyx if he plays well and Clock has the higher chance of winning the lane. And then your tri lane, you already mentioned the disruption into Shadow Wave. That's insane. Combined with the, the Lashrak in a farmy role, which he should be in, they can beat, they can at least potentially beat this Navi tri lane. So. I don't know. I'm a little worried for Navi, and I feel like maybe they want to try and dodge, put the Nyx bottom, rotate the Gyro into a, an offensive tri-lane, but really just to dodge the, the Vega tri-lane that could be headed their way. We'll, we'll see. For now, that Shadow Demon, though, he's, he's heading towards bottom, but he's not going with the Lashrak. Looks like Lashrak may be going top in the end, so perhaps they will decide to back down. I really feel like they should be going aggressive here, though.
Navi going to roll out his five, looking to protect their own jungle. There will be three headed down that way, at least initially, from Vega. And I don't think we're going to see anyone getting too adventurous here, probably just setting up to try to get into position for the room. Maybe maybe it's a clock aggressive, Charlie. This was something that, uh, oh, you know who it was? LGD International did this. You mentioned G League. Oh, yeah. This was during G League. They I would remember that. You disrupt, you get the clock on top of them, you cog, and then you shadow wave. So it's like you get the shadow wave bomb, and they can't leave after that. So you're just smacking them the whole time. Yep. Okay, so then they're doing aggressive, Charlie. Lashrac going off lane, probably 1v1 against Nyx, unless Navi try to dodge this. Yeah, this could be very interesting. Uh, I, if they get that, either either try lane, as long as they go aggressive and get the matchup, I think Vega come out on top here. About 15 seconds from the horn blowing, and still waiting to see exactly how these lanes are going to shape up. A lot of options on both sides. And I actually, if they end up going aggressive and Navi does not dodge, I'm really favoring Vega uh, here early on. And so far, it doesn't look to be the case, though I doubt they've completely spotted this quite yet. Bounty runes picked up by the Shadow Fiend and the Gyro. Well, art style. Oh, he's expecting the off lane clockwork. I think he wants to oh. eat the tree. He wants to eat the tree so that clockwork can't just cog the creeps in. But little did he know, there's two heroes here, Aaron. Oh, what a disaster off the bat for art style. Oh, well, art style once again. Takes an unfortunate death. And that is a, that that's I, I think he's thinking. Okay, cl someone's gonna be back blocking the creep wave. Yep. Clockwork's probably just about to cog the creeps in. So I'm just gonna go and eat that tree right over uh, right over here, so that you can't just keep them locked back in the passageway. But <laughs> wasn't the case, man. And he pays. Navi is adjusting their lanes, at least it seems. Uh, Art Style will be making his way back down to bottom. It seems both teams are. Yeah. Right? In the end, they're, they're seeing just a gyrocopter bottom, and after the first blood, uh, they're very confident that Mag will get a lot out of the offlane without needing any support. Yep. They're going to try to zone him out a little bit, so it will be dual lanes, um, at least a little bit. Dindy right now is getting some help from Soneko, and he's actually got no one quite low, but only so much going to be accomplished there, just trying to secure Dindy that early farm. And really, that's going to make or break him. I mean, like you said, left alone, this should be a, a solid win for the Shadow Fiend. It is a Shadow Fiend on the Dire side instead of Radiance, so not going to be as effective in terms of farming the jungle just by shoving waves. But what do you think of Seneco spending most of his time here, even though he is sapping some XP from Dindy? It's like you said, you definitely need the support early on as a, as a, as a Magnus in this matchup. And Dindy is taking full advantage of it. Already 7-5. Wyvern, one of the better zoning supports at the early levels, I would say. Arctic Burn does just, it just allows you to get a lot of extra harassing and makes life a bit harder. Is that, is that one of the new immortals, that ridiculous hammer that he's got? Yeah. Oh, it is. Man, that, that is like an earthquake when he casts a uh, shockwave. Basically, if you go, is that an immortal? The answer is usually. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> if it stands out that much, generally, always going to be an immortal. Dindy is going to be sandwiched a little bit here. Solo will be there to grab the bounty rune. And Suneko down at bottom grabs the illusion. So uh, to start things off, take a look at the CS. Mag is doing, or excuse me, the Magnus played by Dindy is doing quite well. Sending a 10 and 5 for himself. Just heard a disruption somewhere. And yep. Should be, uh, I'd actually didn't say, okay, there was actually a disruption on the phone. Uh -huh. Phonic's still just level 1. But trying to go in on no one. Yep, no one in some trouble. There's going to be the TP forced out. So Neko's actually a little slow getting out of there. Solo, oh. though, he didn't have disruption. It was on cooldown. Yeah, he used to top earlier to harass the clock. I don't really, or oh, sorry, not the clock, the Nyx. I, I really don't think he needed to. And if he had disruption there, that's a first, or, well, a second blood for Vega. <laughs> uh, not the biggest deal in the world. They, they still keep their Shadow Fiend alive. Even though Shadow Fiend's a bit behind, he's, he's going to catch up at some point as we see Mag being harassed a bit bottom lane. They still have Glimpse available though, Aaron. This is a little bit dangerous. Mag knows if he just tries to run, he's getting Glimpse back into a rocket barrage potentially, but he drives the Disruptor away and then uses the Fog to get out. And because he's got the Boots Edge, that gives him enough opportunity to get out of Glimpse range. Well, talking about the battle of the solo offlaners, uh, Funnick just now found his level two. He's really continuing to struggle. That's compared to level four. Uh, for Mag, or very nearly level 4. CS is quite low. Well, I mean, for uh, for, for poor Funnick, he has zero, as a matter of fact. And a little bit, at the very least. That's a that's a big deal. That is yeah. by far the biggest difference between the two lineups this game. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at Na'Vi, they, they're they getting a bit more farm on their, their Magnus versus the Shadow Fiend. But again, that can easily be fixed. Nyx needs levels as an offlaner. And he needs a decent amount of farm. Uh, and the main thing to me is getting the bottle. Arcane Boots slash at least one of those and the Blink, but uh, he's not going to have it at a quick pace. And 
This is one of the reasons why in the China qualifier we saw Clock prioritize over pretty much every offlaner because he can he's always guaranteed his experience just from being able to cog the creep wave back. Disruption on the Dindy. Bounty runes underneath. Did he get the deny? Nope. Mac manages to uh looks like he was trying to deny it, but uh Bounty Rune is picked up in the meantime, Vega. Really? I mean, they need to consider what's going on here in the mid lane because Shadow Fiend's actually losing it. Not not completely, but he is at about, uh, call it, four-fifths of the CS, or uh, three-fourths, excuse me, of Dendi. So Dendi on his way to a quick blink, quick arcane boots, whatever else. And Max picked up a bottle of his own. Sandy's got a haste rune. He wants to make a go on mid. Here we go. Moving up. Winter Wyvern there to try to help things out. And there's the skewer on him back, but he ate a lot of damage. In the meantime, Courier way too far forward. And Wyvern can't even help out all that much. Dindy has to use the haste instead to escape. So a bit of a botched attempt that time. And he'll, uh, yeah, he's actually got an empty bottle. So he's going to run all the way back home and TP back to mid. So not the best attempt. Really nice play by no one, though. If you just try and run, you're dead there. But he gets off two raises. I think the third one missed because Dendi kind of ran in a circle around him. But it got Dendi low enough that he couldn't stick around. So had no one done the... You know, kind of the, the less experienced play and just tried to run away. He dies, but instead salvages his own life and manages to get back to safety. So well played by him. And yeah, it is really unfortunate. Normally a haste turn in that situation is like all but guaranteed kill, but not in this case. Still remains one to nothing despite a few close calls. Vega remains ahead in that regard. We haven't talked at all about Vega's Leshrac, and uh, he's looking pretty good. Uh, yeah. Atop the CS board, he's actually doing about 10 CS better, or I guess actually 8, as we look at it now, now 9, than Havost, which is surprising given that they have done a better job of zoning Mag. Ah, I see, as soon as I say that, he actually... Oh no, you've jinxed him, Aaron. Yep, now he's going to come out, that's going to be a two-man cog. He's going to get a kill on the art style, maybe? No! Kept alive by Sineko. And a very nice reaction that time. He actually uh, was being zoned out pretty well, but he had gained some experience. Speaking of, Funnick is caught up decently well, a little over uh, halfway to level five now. So finally getting something working on the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, that is, uh, as we already discussed, very important for this team. So looks like there'll be a little skirmish over the bottom rune. Dendi's going to try to make a play here. Sonico has no Arctic burn. Don't think they can really do much without it. He will be allowed to walk away. But yeah, I think looking at the game and the way it's developing right now, the biggest thing for Vega is just getting level 6 on Mag. He is the, really the only hero that's going to be able to set up easy kills for the team. They have disruption into Split Earth, but that's only if you're ganking this top lane, and top lane is Nick. So you disrupt him, he's just going to pop Carapace, and at best you, you might be able to run him down with a, a long, or a, rather a prolonged chase. So. I would like to see Clock get active shortly after he gets level 6. They can even put the Dazzle bottom as he is a very experienced, hungry support. Just try to sit back and leech a bit. And Mag is, is getting close to 6. The death slows him down a little, but he already had a great start, as you pointed out correctly. And as a result, he can afford to give up that kill and still have a very timely level 6. Navi dedicating a bit more effort now to try to zone him out, realizing, oh, there's a glimpse back. Do they have the damage? Rocket Barrage doing the job. A couple of all attacks. No. Uh, survives with about 50 oh, HP. Jesus, that was close. Cut it as close as you could have asked. There him. must have been a stout shield proc in there. I thought yeah, for no, sure. No, he definitely proc. He definitely proc one of the last two auto attacks. So little RNG never hurt nobody unless your name's Navi. Um, Dindy in the meantime is approaching level six. So his uh, lethality should be going up considerably. So Neko continuing to remain active. He's kind of been all over the place. And he wants to scout for the Shadow Fiend stacks and, and see how much is in the jungle right now. Or maybe just, f uh, oh, I guess, ward it off so that they know when they go to farm them. In fact, mm -hmm. he's going to catch no one making this a triple stack here. He might just, I wonder if he blocks it or if he wants it to be built up and then look for his team to steal it. Oh, Courier. Courier running right by him. One auto attack, two auto attacks, not going to have the damage and able to survive with about half HP. Yeah, he used the Arctic Burn. It's a very long cooldown. It, it makes him a lot more vulnerable uh, not having that available, but he's got Dendi in tow, so he should be A-OK. -okay. Oh, the co- What? <laughs> what is going on? Solo, solo RP'd, 
And uh, Navi with some trickeration, and, and they're going to get the stack as well. This is yeah. abs disastrous. Well, for they were going to get they were going to get the stack. That was actually really clever the way that they just kind of stayed, you know, hidden. Seneco showed himself trying to attack the courier, but there was no reaction, and then the courier just flew right back and died. So, uh, unfortunately, the wheels coming off the wagon in a very real way for Vega. All of a sudden, they lose the stack, they lose the courier, and now Navi feeling emboldened a level six and a half Dindy. Oh, that really hurts. Uh, I feel like I'm not... Oh, by the way, Sonico, uh, I think he, he flew over the trees with Arctic Bird and got himself stuck, maybe? <laughs> Is he legitimately stuck? He's got a TP. He might be hanging out. Yeah, he's hanging out. Oh, no, I, he's I, was, not, I was thinking he's he could pass it. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering why he's sitting there in solo health. I guess he wants to try and steal the, uh, the remaining creeps, but yeah, he will be able to walk away. Pasha's low. Oh, you know, uh oh, uh oh. That was not worth it. Sonico, he's going to try to deny himself. <laughs> not no light. Oh, that's a freebie for Vega. I, I mean, they desperately need kills like that, the way this game's developing. Well, we're coming up on 10 minutes, and it's been a long day for these teams, I'm sure. It's still a very even game, despite the back and forth. And the big thing is that I think where the game's going to turn is just looking at how the Magnus and the Clockwork are able to to play this one out. Mag does not have his level 6 yet. Dendi already has Blink and level, almost level 7. Yep. Look for him to try for a, a quick kill here on the Shadow Fiend mid. He's there with Funic. He's got... The, oh, I think... Oh, he doesn't have the RP yet, actually. Yep. That's odd. Nor, well, oftentimes you'll see a, a Magnus player choose to hide the Blink, but I guess Vega may have suspected he had it just because he got all those kills on the stack earlier. Well, they really need to get level 6 on Funic. If yeah. Funic's level 6 is Vendetta, that's a 100% sure kill down the bottom. There's going to be a disruption. Sneko again died, back up, and about to die again. We'll go ahead and Cold Embrace himself. Not going to matter, as that's another freebie. Make it 3-3. Three to three. Vega getting a little help. Yeah, kind of a topsy-turvy game. Nyx does hit 6, and they have Magnus Blink. So I mentioned uh, I mentioned just the mag blink, but I, I guess for Navi, those are they had they have the advantage of having two really good initiators here. Yep. So uh, time to see if they can make plays with them. It feels like they may need to, as uh, their supports are getting really shut down here. Kill on Lesh should be a very big deal. He's very quietly farmed 2,400 gold in the bank, and they are rotating kind of in that direction. Didn't he gonna stop and take a little bit of farm on the way? Funic has used his vendetta for the first time. And yeah, Vega, they either spotted it or they uh, just have good game senses. They have completely tucked Pash away, knowing that he's a prime target right now. I think that is more game sense. The the Dyer have one ward, but it's off near the bottom side of the map. So yeah. he's able to dodge that one. Still, Funnick can hide in the trees here and may be able to catch this track out, depending on how long Pasha's is willing to hide. Now 30 seconds on Vendetta. He's getting a little help now. Uh, oh, this solo. could be big for him. The art style is level six as well. But they're sitting really far back. That looks like they're just gonna hang for the moment, soak some XP. Dendi was kind of walking his way up there, stopped off in the jungle. Now it's gonna be three though, as Mag is hooked up. There will be a very quick pause from art style, and would expect to see some action coming up sometime soon. But yeah, this Lesh is quietly. Uh, become, well, he has been for a while, actually, the most farmed hero on the map in terms of pure CS, anyway. Um, right behind him, though, is Havost, and Havost doing what Havost does. Didn't start as well as anyone would have liked, but uh, right behind the Leshrag now has continued his item development quite well. Phase Boots Aquila, as well as a Helm of the Dominator and an Ogre Club already back at the base. So and, he's, and he's already got a nice stack of Ancients here. He's got a triple, I believe, or is that, I'm actually having trouble counting. I think that's counting. two. Oh, uh, no. No, it's, that's, a, that's it's a triple. Yep. Yeah. I'm counting the health bars because I, yeah. I can't really. The, the one wing is covering like three creeps. That <laughs> looks like he's giving a big old hug. Yeah, I, I love the face on the ancient black dragon. It's got like this derpy <laughs> walrus. It's like a derpy <laughs> walrus dragon, not an ancient black dragon. <laughs> we still in beta, son. Yeah, we beta boys. Beta boys. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be back underway momentarily. But uh, once again, if you're just tuning in, we are about 12 minutes into game two of this Navi versus Vega best of two series in the European qualifier. And very important for both, Navi come, coming off of a long and drawn out but very satisfying win in their previous series against Hellraiser, jumping right into this series as well. So hopefully still riding that momentum. While Vega not down and out, it's not as if they're really bottom of the tier or in the cell or anything quite yet, but uh, they really cannot give up an 0-2 here. Um, and, they, and if they again give up an 0-2 here, they're going to be going into the next day of games uh, fighting from the bottom up. And that's the last thing you want 
when you have an opportunity like this on the line, especially given, you know, just given the names and the talent and the experience, many consider them to be a favorite here in this group. Oh, they planted a sentry ward top lane, Aaron. They were expecting the Nyx gank, and they're going to find him. Disruption. Soul Catcher, there's the stun. He got up the carapace, but it's not highly leveled. Now they luke him very low. Pulse Nova's going to finish him off. They knew this was coming. However, Static Storm made sure to turn this one around. Pasha dropping Ooh. low. Oh, just able to barely skate away. The Vitality Booster arriving uh, as that gank ends, so now he gets even harder to kill, but just great game sets by Vega. That's, I believe, three skirmishes in a row where they've been in position to completely turn the fights and, and come out on top. You know, and again, it comes back to little things. You know, it, it's such a, it's, it, it's all the little things that just add up and all these little moments, like, uh, when that Blink Dagger was first picked up by Dindy, we saw that poor Funic was just a little bit underleveled on the Nyx Assassin, didn't have Vendetta in mid, so they had to wait. Instead of be getting what would have been 100% a sure kill on the Shadow Fiend, um, they have to wait and take a shot at top, but by that time, they get adapted. And instead, um, you know, Nyx's first foray into really trying to make something happen with Vendetta goes from being what would have been a sure kill if he had just been a little bit more leveled to instead being a big death up at top, Lashrac, um, getting the, I'm pretty sure he got credit for that, if I'm not mistaken. No, never mind, he got the assist. But uh, either way, he's still getting a lot far. Oh yeah, Bloodstone is not far away. You know, I, I, I think for Navi, this is where they look at the draft and say, okay, we didn't have the best lady stage, but we drafted so that it doesn't necessarily matter. We still have our towers. We have an insanely strong team fight. Mass stun, lo lots of BKB piercing disable, and oh, oh. Dendi gets baited mid. Whiffed it. Wah, wah, wah. Gonna be a couple of minutes before he can take his shot again. Down the bottom, we do have the solo laners up against each other just trying to get some XP. And Funic is really benefiting the most from this. He's caught up. He's now level 7. That's actually um, about half a level ahead of where Mag sits. So, um, which do you think is actually more important to the success of the composition? Is it the Nyx for Na'Vi or the Clockwork for Vega? I think the clock's more important for Vega because he's their only initiator, whereas Navi have the mag as well as the Nyx. And I would say to some extent even Disruptor can be an initiator with, with Glimpse. Yeah, Shadow Demon can be. The difference is his range of initiation is extremely low. So, yeah, I would say clock out of all of the initiators, like the he's got the most Im overall importance to his team. And Mag's been quiet so far. There hasn't been a ton of pressure. I, where I see Mag really being important is more later on in the game, or if Na'Vi try to make a play aggressively. That's where Nick's, or, uh, Clock can TP in, Hook look to turn the fight, maybe dust the, the Nyx as he's retreating out, as you can see Mag has picked one up. And they are looking to make a go on Funic. He's got to be careful here in the bottom lane. Looks like he doesn't want to get too close to the creeps. He's kind of bouncing around. And Mag not even going to throw out the uh, Rocket Flare just to try to take vision. So they're going to bide their time, and I think that's the right call. In the meantime, Vega, is getting a fair amount of farm on no one. He is going to have his mech up uh, right now, as a matter of fact. He's got the recipe and the headdress ready to head out that way. Will be forced off of the tower by Suniko. Look at the stack for Avos. This is just ridiculous. And this is what Avos does. I don't think Vega's seen it either. They send a rocket towards top and... Dendi, his blink is disabled right now. It's disabled again, and they're bringing in more reinforcements. They're going to go for this with the clockwork. Need to be ready with the glimpse. Oh, Mag instantly brought back. They do get off the hook on art style, but he's sent all the way to bottom. That's such very well played. They're going to try to continue to engage this out. In the meantime, Navi has hooked up. Art style's very low, but they're going to be able to bring down Solo. Soneko right there up front. Funnick's going to be there with a the mana burn. Seema forced to use the grave on himself. No one there. Uses his ult. Gets some damage done, and down goes Funnick. Avos in the meantime running out of mana and running out of health. The raises, the damage, the burst. All of that magic coming from the shadow raises as well as the lightning storm from the Lesh the, and yeah, the shadow was, They just have so much spam on their cores. Like they you stick really around, the extra raises come flying out. The Requiem w w didn't really blow anyone up. It just kind of, you know, softened everyone up. them a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And they, they, the fight looks so good for Navi. They glimpsed the clock back. The hook doesn't result in a kill. Shadow Fiend walked in to try and Requiem right over here, and he immediately gets Static Storm, so his Requiem doesn't go off right away. They, on top of that, get a really nice, uh, what is it, Nyx Assassin stun yeah. off in the middle of the fight, but they just got chipped away at too much, and I think part of it is Havost did not go straight BKB. He's gone for the Dominator. If he has a BKB in that fight, that is a completely different engagement. But Oh, Dindy in mid. Uh-oh. Just caught being greedy. He will make it to the high ground. No, one auto attack would have done it, but he's able to... Oh, never mind. Shadow Demon gets the bonus damage and the kill. 
So well played. Thought they, uh, I honestly didn't even see that they had the Soul Catcher on him, but. Uh, it, was, it was the Demonic Purge, yeah, Purge finally uh, kicking in at the end there. Yep. So yeah, very well played. And well, we haven't seen a good RP yet. We actually haven't seen uh, really anything out of the RP, despite a very fast blink from Dendi. And, I mean, remember, he rushed this thing. He did not complete Arcane Boots. He had a great start in the lane, but having all your farm con concentrated in a mag, if he doesn't find RPs, I mean, this is not a core, right? That's not a Shadow Fiend in the, at least not a traditional carry type hero. You need to be making plays for the team, so. I'm a little worried for Na'Vi. At the same time, it's like, until this team is down 15, 20k gold and being sieged, the, the type of lineup they have can just win one fight and it's suddenly a five-man wipe and it's dipped back to dead even. Good news for Na'Vi, they clear out the ancient stack of Ost, I think realizing I really need my BKB before the next engagement and he will be rather close to it. Meanwhile, we're gonna see Vega smoke up. Do they want to try and go for this Roshan? Uh, seems like maybe trying to set something up in the bottom lane. If they get a kill and it's on a key hero, they can walk into the Roche pit and, and take the Aegis at this point. So Na'Vi do have to be quite careful at this moment. Will be a smoke as Navi ready to make a run in Vega. Vega has three over here. However, uh, let's see, at least one is smoked. Solo is hidden. So they may be able to sniff this out. Okay, never mind. Seema Smokey, the war offer, he intentionally got rid of it. This will be a three on three. What's the attack angle going to be? So Neko may have gotten spotted, and here we go. Trying to engage in. Clock is coming. And there's going to be the glimpse back. No one able to walk out of it, though. Dendi hits a two-man RP. Follow-up should be there. Defensive disruption from Solo's on point. But they do manage to bring one down already. No one in the meantime does get the ulti off. That and Hobo's doing BKB one. just so oh, much damage. He's man. fighting his way through all of Vega, forcing them back. It's actually a three for two, though. Is they didn't manage to bring down the Lishrak. While that double ult, they're not done yet. Chase continues there, and there's the Shockwave. Buyback on the Winter Wyvern. And Vega going to be happy with that and just walk away. Missile will chase. I don't... They do have a Blink Skewer soon, but it's very risky to go in this far. While there was the two-hero RP, there was simultaneously also a two-hero hookshot cog. So both teams got a great initiation, except for the Static Storm. That was that was a very costly whiff. If that hits a couple of heroes, Na'Vi just crushed that fight. Shadow Demon's uh, defensive disruption was gigantic there. That's what kept that fight going That's, following the yeah, RP. Yeah, absolutely. So Solo getting the job done, and it looks like we're ready for round two. They're ready to lock and load and go once again. Well, they know that RP's down. They, well, it's funny going for the mini Ravage stun here. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, Dindy actually already skewered forward. And, uh, or jumped forward to try to skewer back. Mag in the meantime, caught, locked down. He's eating a lot of damage. Shadow Wave's there to try to help, but the cooldown's there, and the Grave will keep him up and fighting. No one down yet. And the disruptions, you mentioned it. It's changing the game right now, Mag. Being pursued by a homing missile, they'll clean it up. Every fight, it's like Vega lose almost every single oh, hero. Glimpse back. They got Pasha. Can they do anything with it? Phonics there with the follow-up impale. He's got a Bloodstone deny if he really needs it, but they still have heals coming out. S disruption about to cool down. Navi really want to chase now. Havos does a VKB. But has to be careful he doesn't waste these charges. There's oh, the Blink Skewer. They keep the Shadow Demon away. No defensive disruption for you, sir. And that is a, a big kill. Although oh. Lesh instantly is going to oh. respawn. The hook onto Dindy. He didn't mean to do that. He was actually looking to hook Nyx Assassin and missed. Ends up hitting Dindy. He ends up dying because of it. So Navi gets given a free one. And so Neko dies to a Shadow Race. Now Funnick caught from behind with the Demonic Purge. He's dead. Call down on point. But, oh, Havos has got to run. Ulti from, from no one. Just to, practically to celebrate as Dindy's next on the list. Suddenly, Navi is down to one man, and he is limping his way back to base. So Vega, and you know, again, that was really bizarre. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, the clock, uh, it looked like he was trying to hook the Nyx Assassin. He missed, it went long, and ended up hooking him into a very deep Magnus. So he was dead before he could really contribute much of anything. Yeah, that it didn't. It wasn't the hook he wanted, but it still works out. And, and the main Got reason why done. Lesh had 12 bloodstone charges, so he respawned. I think it was like five seconds. Right. He's instantly back in with all his cooldowns. Meanwhile, Havos. He doesn't have a Bloodstone. He didn't die. He's got like a quarter of his health or half his health. BKB was cooling down. He got a second call down. That fight took so long and, and still they end up coming up a bit short. And It's just, it's really the power of a, a Fed Lesh early on. This hero can just completely change the game. And I, I think the fact that he just dishes out so much damage and builds Bloodstone a lot is, is one of the reasons why we're seeing him prioritized over a lot of other carries. He just is basically able to fight 24-7, whereas these like more traditional team fight heroes like Gyrocopter can excel, but that is the, the one downside. Use your call down BKB at this stage of the game. If you don't have a big fight, you're basically not doing anything for about a minute.
Yeah, speaking of, both teams have separated out. Happy to take some farm and take a bit of a breather from each other. And I'm actually unable to... Oh, there. Never mind. Somebody remapped the keys. I was going to say, net worth-wise and gold-wise, still a very close game. About 3,000 in both categories. So uh, Vega has built up a considerable kill lead. But um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it actually is in favor of them in both regards. But we've yet to see Na'Vi really put together the big combo potential we know they have. We've seen them hit some damage. We've seen them get the job done here and there. But for the most part, we have yet to see them really put it all together. And I think... If they're able to do that, it's going to break Vegas back. But that's getting harder and harder to do whenever you have, like, BKB coming out on this Lashrak. And he is just absolutely immensely farmed. Tops on the board in network. He's a monster. And the big concern is, although they have a lot of BKB piercing lockdown, they have almost no BKB piercing damage right now. Right. Gyrocopter is building a Yasha. Yeah, actually, I guess with Empower, they, uh, I take that back. They have decent BKB piercing damage, but it's not exceptional. And the other thing to suppose is BKB is already down to eight seconds. So I, I, pretty soon it's going to be a five second BKB. And that's something that could really be punished by this pretty heavy magic damage draft that they have. Here comes Navi though, straight down the middle lane. They want to push Risky to go in against Clockwork. They've now seen the Lashrak BKB and this may deter Navi's aggression. I don't know if you mentioned it, but there's a haste room bottled up on Dendi, and nope. this is uh, a rune that could make a big difference. There's going to be a smoke very aggressive out of Na'Vi. Which way are they going to go? They're going to head south. I think they might have just seen the animation. They smoked, like, right here. It was close, anyway. Shadow Fiend and Dazzle trying to stake themselves a Roshan. The medallion, somebody's got one. I thought I heard one. Uh, yeah, Solo has one. Oh, but they're going to spot this one out, Aaron. They're smoking oh. in. Two smokes about to cross paths. They are spread out really well. So long as they don't come together, they're going to... Oh, they actually have a sentry down. They're able to spot Funnick. And no one immediately uses the BKB. There's going to be the call down. But Havos whips on it. Didn't catch anyone. So that's one big ult they're not going to have at their disposal. And they're already la la lacking the Nyx. This Roche down to about half health. There's a DD. Oh, Good deny. Havos Good deny. really wanted that. Good deny. Solo making plays. Mag is just waiting as well. If they, if they, if Havos runs in the river, Mag's going to hook in and cut off the rest of the team, and then Havos is going to be left in a 1v5. I, I don't think they can actually contest this anymore. Maybe yeah. with Dendi. Blink, Skewer, at oh. least going to find a pickoff. Defensive disruption. Keeps himself alive. Wastes a little time at the very least. Doesn't matter, as Roche should be dropping in the meantime. They're going in, they've got the RP on Dendi. Doesn't find the, the target. And now he's going to solo RP no one. There's the follow-up hook. Dendi spending the RP to get nothing accomplished. Behind that, the fight rages on. Havos has to make a run for it as Pasha is right on his tailpipe. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to catch him. Ends up being a three for one. And the one they got, they got for free. Like, they didn't have to engage to get that single kill. Oh, man. And they, that is... It's crippling. Crippling. The, losing the Magnus as well as two additional heroes there when it could have just been a one for one. The the Nyx in exchange for the Shadow Demon. The good news was they had forced out a, a BKB charge uh, from the Leshrac. So that's the B Leshrac BKB, 10 second duration gone. Same for the Shadow Fiend. It's still a win for Vega getting the Aegis, but it's not an undefeatable advantage they gain. This, yep. this though, is, this is a big advantage now. Getting those kills, getting the Aegis on top of it. They're gonna, Navi are going to have to just focus on playing more defensively at this yep. point. Use their the advantage that their lineup has in a turtle situation. Dyer's Farm Havos towards a late game monster type build. I, I think they've lost almost all of their ability to, to force large 5v5 Dyer's fights, at, at least for now. I'm a little baffled by that RP from Dindy. I mean, Dindy, one of the best decision makers in the game. It, it, it happens. You know, he yep. tries to run in the pit, and unfortunately, the time he was off. If they, Roche had, like, if it was like two more seconds to kill Roche, he probably gets a three horror RP, and then Disruptor can get a Static Storm on three as well. But instead, they'd already gotten the Roche. They're already leaving the pit, and yeah, it, 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 it did turn out to be a total train wreck for Navi in the end. Let's talk about where we go from here. Vega, happy to go ahead and rotate, clear out of Tier 1. This is probably a fight that's going to be dodged. And are they going to continue to push? I think they, they're in a good enough position. They can so long as they replicate what they did last time which is they kept such a good spread. Like, no matter who came in, no matter what they saw, even whenever the Knicks came in and the BKB was, was popped, it, the temptation to just go, okay, here comes the rest of Navi. Let's just go ahead and rush in had to be tremendous. Instead, they kept an amazing split and avoided any RP. Oh, missed on the skewer. Oh, they really need to play like that. That, yeah. that is the key for Navi here is you might, if you can't find that, you probably just have to sacrifice the tower. Yeah. 
There's going to be a call down. No one eating most of that damage. I, I like how Solo walks in to take the call down. He's like, yeah, whatever. I don't even mind. Wow. Waste of a glimpse there. Art style. Unable to get the kinetic field together. They're basically just trying to spam their abilities to, to soften Vague up and, and more importantly to to hope for like that one hero caught out of position that you can then blink skewer and either pop the Aegis or, or get a free pick, but they're just not quite able to find that opening. They've got Mag in a good position over to the right. And he'll be happy to go. Havos is a pretty prime target. Havos's mana is actually quite low right now as well. He will have call down back off cooldown in about 10 seconds. They've got two minutes remaining on the Aegis, so if they want to put it to, to use, they need to do it now. There's a preemptive weave fresh off of cooldown as well. And at some point, they just need to commit. Like, if they really want this fight and really want to get some mileage out of the Aegis, they need to go real soon. Now he's doing a, yeah, they're doing a really good job at holding this, to be honest. Vega keeps on pressing in, but they're a little afraid to overly commit because of the threat of that Blink Skewer play. And as a result, it's it's taking longer. Otherwise, oh, here look, we go. There Blink you go. Skewer, no one caught. We'll go ahead and use the ulti and a nice damage done. That's enough to clear them out. And yep, they're going to be able to demonic purge on art style. Didn't even need it. I think they could have killed him regardless. And they found a bows. This is the bigger kill. He's got nowhere to run. Uh, fortunately, he's a BKB TP. <laughs> if, if, if they had something else to break the, the, the TP there, that is a, a devastating pickoff. But it does force out his BKB iron. And with no BKB on Gyro, I, I feel like Vega could even look for the tier 2 mid. Though the Aegis is ending soon. They're kind of low, so. Waves pushed up as well. They would have to reset. Yeah, so, so perhaps they just let it go. By the way, Leshrac already another soul booster picked up and Jeez. well on his way to a potential Octarine core pickup, I'm guessing. Yep, pub build. And well, it's it's just at some point Leshrac gets to that stage of the game where he stands with five heroes whacking him. <laughs> LOL, LOL, LOL. That's the thing, is they yeah, they have BKB piercing stuns, but if he's got Pulse Nova active, it keeps on going. It's like a death profit, except he's gonna be life stealing it all back. Well and it's it's kinda got that effect. Like of a satanic almost. Like you yeah. just you, you walk in and you go, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just chill, I'm gonna do my thing, and you hold on to your BKB until you know you're about half health, then you BKB, and then you regen your health so quickly if if things are crumped are clumped up around you. Exactly. It's you don't want to go on him, but you absolutely cannot ignore him. And that's oh, a solo. That rocket barrage. Good disruption. Now Havos has to use his BKB. They're coming in. Havos is way out front by himself. Going to try to TP away and should be able to do so behind that. So Neko's actually got high ground. They're going to guess that happened due to Cogs. And damage not there. So they are able to get him home as well. Solo did end up dying um, at the end of everything else, but a relatively small kill for Na'Vi. But a kill is a kill, and they're buying some time. Avos farm, I'm not sure it's where it needs to be right now. Yeah, it's he's he's doing well considering the situation, but it's getting to the point where he's going to need to be the most farmed here on the map because yeah. look at everyone else. Disruptor Wyvern's starting to fall pretty far behind. Is uh, I will miss a Nyx kill. Does find the clockwork. Nice pick off for Funic. But uh, yeah, I I don't know. I feel like it's getting to that point where Navi will need a massive RP to, to win engagements. They're, you look at Vega, they have two really fat cores. They have Disruption and basically two great defensive supports. Disruption, Grave, Heal. If you only RP one core, even if you kill them, that's not really enough. You have to get both, uh, either with the, like a Blink Skewer on one and RP on another, or RP one and then you Static Storm, Nyx stun, Burst another. It's just going to be very difficult to find those openings with uh, such a strong defensive lineup, but Dendi will find Pasha. Uh, BKB does manage to catch two. Do they have the damage? Pasha doing just fine. That's going to be a negative. Yep. So Vost is not there. <laughs> Vost trying to get away and will be able to do so. Heard a glimpse. Didn't hear who it was. Art style will be disrupted out of his TP. A little bit of miscommunication, not that it's going to matter tremendously. He just disappeared. <laughs> like, he literally, like, I, I, he disappeared as soon as soon as he came out of that. Yeah, he got soul catchered. I think it was one tick of Pulse Nova <laughs> and one raise, and he was just dead, like, deleted from the game. <laughs> that was really funny. Well, 21 to 12, and this is beginning to look... I mean, Havos, again, it, it's not his fault. He is relatively well farmed, but... The fall off from there is just so tremendous, and, and I'm, I'm not sure. The one thing I'm really not sure about is this Sanjin Yasha, but I feel like the way the game's going, he needs to be 
Sajiyasha is great, I feel, when you're playing from ahead with Gyrocopter. Right. If you want the extra move speed, it, it does help you stay in range for Rocket Barrage. Uh, it, it's kind of a, an easy build-up, so you can just keep on fighting constantly instead of having to wait to farm a bigger item like a Butterfly or maybe a Scotty. But the way the game's developing, Havost really needs like that Satanic MKB type of item itemization or Satanic Daedalus, perhaps, something like that. And uh, He did get a Yasha, but I feel like... He already had it when the game was kind of close. So I think you just, you obviously it's not like the Yasha was bad necessarily, but just sit on the Yasha, get something a little bit bigger that makes you more of the, the mega carry. Well, at this point, you know, the, the damage is done as far as the item build. He's just going to have to find his farm from here. And the thing that makes it tough is losing that, that tier one and tier two mid and top. There's very little control over the Radiant Ancients. And if they try to stack them, Vega might just swoop in and steal that stack for themselves. Oh, yeah. Vega basically has a run of the map, and a big part of that is because Pasha is so fat, he's got a gravitational field. He's got <laughs> 16 Bloodstone charges, he's got his BKB, even though it's he's been active with it, he still has at least 7 seconds on it. Octarine Core is done. He is just absolutely massive at this point. And I don't know how they begin to deal with it. I mean, he's just way too overleveled. Now they have a Scotty done on no one as well as he's just continuing to farm up. Roche these, is going to be back up soon. These carries aren't going to die. No, they're just not. I, I mean, uh, the only way that they burst them is if they get off RP and Winter's Curse on at least one of them, ideally both. And again, you've got this. You've got a Shadow Demon. You've yep. got Grave. Grave has extremely long range when it's maxed. And... Yeah, at this point it is. Plus, I, mean, I think there's a four staff or a blink on Solo. Yeah, four staff on him. So, I mean, good luck. But they, they, they just they have to outplay Vega at this point. It's the stage of the game where they need to find pickoffs with Dendi, farm Havost. If Vega go for the high ground siege, they need that blink skewer play. Maybe they start start off with like a glimpse, like glimpse into blink skewer. But ultimately, they have to pull a core oh. out of position so that they can't be grave. Pasha or just got disrupted. caught. Do they have any help? Nope. Pasha was trying to TP away and actually got caught in Mana Burn. Mana Burn, by the way, does a significant amount of damage to him. It, it, it really does. That's one of their biggest damage dealing spells. Uh, of course, there's still a, a seven second BKV, but if it's down, then yeah, that's probably their best tool for, for trying to kill him. Four staff done on the Nyx Assassin. The itemization out of Navi, slow, but not unexistent. Nope, that's not a word. Non-existent. Um, Vega is going to go ahead and smoke. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's Navi with the little satyr in the Roche pit. They, they check and they see Roche is up. There is a mind stealer there, and they're going to go ahead and immediately kill it. And are they going to go for it? They are. Navi is way spread out. They do not have an outer tier tower. This should be a free Roche. Yeah, this is absolutely free. If Navi leave the base and contest this and they lose a fight at the pit, uh, presumably they're going to use RP, right? And probably call down as well. Probably gyro BKB. Vega go and, and just take two racks, top as well as mid. So I, I don't think Navi should even consider contesting this. They're way too far behind. They're also very reliant on that big long cooldown ultimate, which is where it's super risky to go for that play. But this now means Vega may try to break the base. Well, one thing that is worth mentioning, despite how many kills Vega has piled up, despite how how farmed their cores are, if you take a look at the gold and net worth graphs, Navi has actually been slowly eating away at the lead. I'm not saying that's going to win it for him. I'm not <laughs> saying this is going to be a three-hour game and they're somehow going to get that back to even that way. But it is nice to know that they have not been continually losing ground. It is, still are. it is impressive how close they've kept it. Yeah. So if they can win one, two fights, if Vega makes one, two big mistakes, suddenly get a ball game again. But... Um, they so need that one fight. I, again, it, it starts with the Blink Skewer. If they find it, anything's possible. If they can't, I think it's almost impossible to kill either of these cores. And Tier 2, last out of Tier Tower remaining for Navi. They glyph it, and down it goes. Vega are feeling strong, though. Here they go. Four heroes pushing in bottom. It's Clock. Clock is City mid. He wants to cancel Havos TP when he tries to TP back. This could be massive. Got man. it! Oh, such a big play, and Havos has to try to walk back home down at bottom. The Tier 3 under Siege, and Navi, there's going to be an RP. They don't have Havos, there's a defensive disruption, and the Kinetic Field Static Storm is there. There's the Grave, though, Impale, going to catch a couple, but there's no damage. No way to follow Navi on the run. Have to head back to the fountain. And Havos is still walking <laughs> back towards the base. He's oh. got MKB gold, Aaron, but by the time he gets here... Racks are gone. Oh, what a disaster. And what an amazing play by Mag. Single-handedly secures them a full lane of racks. Yep.
And not just the, you know, that's the kind of thing where, I mean, just the awareness to be like, hey, we're in a position to push. You, you know, Havost is greedy. He's going to farm as many creeps as he can. You have time. Get into position. Make it happen. And then hitting the clutch shot. They only did get the melee racks. Range Ratch still stands. But, I mean, the ability for Nobby to get onto the other side of the map now is going to be so non-existent. And the, to be honest, we've reached a point where, yes, Empower and Flat Cannon are nice. But you're talking a Shadow Fiend and a Leshrac that are absolutely gigantic. MKB be damned. I mean, that's going to help a ton, and it certainly gives them a little bit more potential to, to take that big fight they still need. But, I mean, just look at this team. No one with the Demon Edge, 2,500 gold on top of the BKB mech, and the Scotty, and on the other side, uh, Leshrac, who has added a Shiva's Guard to his inventory as well. So not only does he have Magic Immunity, not only does he have 17, uh, 17 Bloodstone Charges and an Octarine Core to regen, he has armor now. So, I mean, just tremendous play out of Vega. It's going to be really hard to hold this next push. The, the biggest issue is they did not crack the Aegis in, in the last fight, which means Vega still have extra lives. They have uh, so many saves. The Aegis is the big one. The, the TP, well, actually, Pasha does not have boosts of Travel Cult, so that's one small piece of good news, <laughs> but he'll respawn instantly. He can just run down mid. Disruption, of course, the Grave. The Shadow Fiend has a mech av uh, available. Both BKBs are up. This is the last stand. Navi absolutely must get a big pick or they will lose two lanes of Rex. Well, no one hitting a fair amount of damage from free out front. And like you said, the initiation potential on both sides is potent. Mag with the hook. Dindy looking to make something happen with a Blink Skewer or a Blink RP. Let's see how Vega want to play it. Are they going to pull back? Yeah, they may, they may decide to play it a little bit safer here. They've got, let's see, about a minute and a half on the Aegis. Maybe they want to go mid instead. And the other thing is no one has his next item now. He's got 3,300 gold. I'm curious if he wants to complete a, an MKB here. Is he going Daedalus? Uh, or is he just going to hold on to his gold for now and maybe save for a potential buyback if needed? He's just walking back towards the base. Um, is he thinking Rapier? Is he going for it, Aaron? I want to know. Is this a Rapier? Be nice if it was. What we if doing? he farms oh. these ancients, he would pretty much have the gold for it. I, I want to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is a rape here, but it, it would be nice. Havost, maybe, maybe eventually. Don't think no one's gonna go that direction. And it's more just like he almost had the gold for it. Not he had not bought the MKB. He walks to the side, secret shop. It's like, come on, man. No. Do it. Do it for the viewers. Think of the fans. He went crit stick. Pick Boo. up. The yep, Crystalis on the way out to him right now. Everyone report this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. This is this is TI qualities. You do what you gotta do, man. Well, they're gonna slowly rotate back towards bottom. And they got a double wave heading in. They are spread out, so they're not gonna be able to utilize that to the fullest. Looks like they'll get a free range drax here just from the creeps pushing in. That's gonna be close. One more catapult shot. Oh uh, no, still alive. Aegis is gone. Done. One more creep. Give it a snack. Oh, no. They're pulling him back. Rain track saved. 14 HP. <laughs> Just deny it. Do it. Do it, guys. I, I, do you feel like that was the right call? Like, I feel like Vega basically gave away an Aegis for nothing. Oh, you mean as far as not forcing the issue? Yeah. Hmm. I, I think they still go really late. Like, as much as... I would, I would favor Navi if they get a good initiation, but... Only if they get one. If th We've seen Dendi struggle to find amazing RPs this game. Yep. He's gotten two two man. I think like two man RPs have been the best. Maybe there was one three man RP, but yep. that it, they also haven't got converted into kills. So that's where I feel like Navi's lineup, the execution is always going to be the challenge for them. And so I think Vega have more room to grow here. No one can replace the mech. I would say he can also get like a Satanic at some point. There's no AA this game, so it's a, a really nice pickup. Seema the Slayer's got his BKB on Dazzle nearly. That's a pretty big item. Um, other than that, Clock Eggs should be done soon. And, I mean, the Lesh getting Boots of Travel, That's too. That's big, yeah. So, yeah, I think they have... I, I would say the next stage, this is where they should really be looking to, to get two lanes of Rax and end the game. And they should have it fairly soon. Now, for now, Navi continuing to play defensive. So, Neko trying to be cute. Flying through the woods, and they know he's there, but it doesn't look like they want to over-pursue. Disruptor, in the meantime, has picked up a scepter of his own. The downside to not pushing, though, is that they have now the Disruptor eggs and the Refresher Mag, which they yep. did not have before. So 
You do bring up a good point that it's kind of... It is giving Na'Vi that chance to claw their way back in the game. Havost also got his first damage item earlier. Now he's got 2,800 gold. Soon he's going to have a Satanic, so... It does get a bit trickier here for Vega, and there's always that risk, like, no matter how late it gets. RP on three or four, yep. with flat cannon on a gyrocopter, your whole team's dead. Well, I feel like the refreshers really... That's the item more so than any other on the map right now that has a chance to blow the game wide open. Um, you know, we haven't seen that, that earth-shattering RP, or even on the good RPs we have seen, we just haven't seen the follow-up. But if you're able to catch lightning in a bottle, if you're able to get... Two, you know, able to get one of the two two major cores, or maybe even both of them, plus a support, and you catch it before BKBs are deployed, and so on and so on. Suddenly, that's eight seconds you're going to have uh, to try to bring them down. And Havos now has the damage for that. Daz I mean, you know, we didn't even really talk about this. We talked about the combo potential of Shadow Demon and Dazzle, but these two heroes, just so far as keeping people alive and keeping each other alive, is a big deal as well. Uh, being able, you know, if they engage on a Shadow Demon, being able to Grave him. If they engage on a Dazzle, being even, able to Disrupt. Even just the Weave. Weave yep. versus Gyro with Empower is so crucial. Having all that plus armors, it's the main damage that Na'Vi have later on in this game. They're, they don't have, like, a Lashrak for a massive magical damage type carry. Later on, cooldown's just kind of eh. Right. You know, it's not really that much for heroes that have 2,500 health on Shadow Fiend. He's going to have a Satanic, the... The Lashrak running around with 2,500 as well. So that's where, I mean, you bring up a really good point that Dazzle is just devastatingly good against this type of physical damage heavy lineup. Yep. Well, for now, Vega continues to wait it out. Roshan back up in uh, about a minute or two. So for now, just looks to be a farming game for both sides. And unfortunately for Na'Vi, as good as we, as much as we were bragging on them for keeping it close, that's no longer the case, as we can see. The difference in net worth and and uh, uh, overall experience has begun to tank down. So um, even though they have been given some time to make up a little bit of ground and itemize a little bit uh, more deeply into their development, it's still a tough row to hoe. As we can see, Havos is really the only one anywhere near where he needs to be. Um, and he's sitting right on the, on, the, on the tail of the Shadow Fiend and the Leshrac. But, I mean, at some point, it's got to become a rapier game. Like, you're not going to be able to get that damage out against these heroes the more they tank up and the less you're willing to take the gamble. Problem is, there's just so much he needs in front of it. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, I would love to see one, but I, I don't think you get it quite. No. no. Da Daedalus will probably be the next item. I'd say Daedalus Satanic, and then maybe as your last item, you you consider a Rapier. He's, right. Boots of Traveler may need to come into the mix. Like, if they've lost a second lane of Rax, he may have to spend a lot of time uh, pushing lanes out, but... Here we go. Navi, I think they realize if Vega get the next Aegis, they're almost, almost certainly smoke. getting a second lane of Rex. So they smoke, Ooh. but Vega are anticipating this. Who's going to get the initiation? Phonics way out front. BKB immediately used. Sineko, jeez, critted down immediately. Hooks off the mark, but it doesn't matter. Navi's got to run for the hills. They've got an axe on clock. Oh. They're going to have another hook. Buyback. And the hook did come out, unable to follow up with it, though. Oh, no, he's got it now. This is the second... Ah, too late. They, he, he, he jumped in with the cogs with a four-step, then they glimpse him back, but uh, he had that second hook cooldown just, like, I don't know, three, four seconds too late to follow up. Okay, they so force out the buyback. Well, they forced out the buyback, but it did cost no one another BKB charge. And BKB, if they... Roche is going to be back up. If they linger, that's just unfortunate timing. If they linger just another ten seconds, if that... Uh, they're going to see the big guy jump back up. And they're going to continue to hang in the vicinity. Yep, he's up now. Solo going to check it. It's towards the max respawn, which is where both teams are very likely to just stick around the pit. But yep. And they, and they also should be, they should rock it if they're not sure. We'll, we'll see if they go for it. Right now, they're, they're more worried about keeping tabs on the Navi heroes than they are on Roche. Roche is not going anywhere. Navi could come from anywhere. Pasha heads on into the pit. Phonix thinking about making a move here as well. He's up perched on the high ground. They start to see some heroes walk in, and he is in Viz currently. He saw the movement. Oh, there's the RP. Only got one. It is all oh, beautiful disruption. He has a refresher, but this next so one has to be brilliant. Point. Here we go, Mag. Right there, Havost is caught inside of the cogs. He's just being right-clicked down by no one. Did survive by the skin of his teeth thanks to the Winter Wyvern. Now there's going to be a skewer. RP is back up if he wants it. He's up on the high ground trying to get out of dodge. Pasha there, helped out by Mag, who connects with the hook. So Neko saved. I mean, we had two amazing saves, one on each side that time. Unfortunately, 
still comes out in favor of Vega as they go three for two. What a disruption from Solo to keep uh, uh, to keep the Shadow uh, Shadow Fiend alive, allow him to actually engage on his own terms. But a very beautiful play from the winner uh, Wyvern as well, using the Cold Embrace to keep a boast alive at next to no health. Yeah, great saves on both sides. Unfortunately, right before uh, they because they blink skewered towards the end of that fight. Pavos was almost dead, he got cold embrace. Then they tried to blink skewer the Lashrak away from him so Dendi could save Pavos. Unfortunately, Lashrak had thrown a stun out which hit the ground right before that, so he ends up dying anyway. And that's the thing for Vega. They have two heroes that can carry, that can just win fights for the team, the Lashrak and the Shadow Fiend. Whereas Navi, they only have Gyrocopter. The rest of these heroes are all about setting up for him and like you said, just a great disruption. That's really what made the fight. If he gets, say, the Shadow Demon and the Shadow Fiend and gets the skewer out of the pit, yep. I think Navi actually wins that fight. But, but it's really good positioning, too, because Solo was hanging way, way back in the pit, like as far as he possibly could be. Yeah, and Denny was expecting, like, the more traditional, like, kind of two or three heroes just clumped up on top of Roche, just, you know, wailing away at him. But right. wasn't the case. Just not needed. They, they still have the potential, but it's getting to that point where... So many things have to go wrong for Vega, and everything has to go right for Na'Vi. And I won't say it's insurmountable with this draft, but it's it's getting close. I don't know how they kill Lesh once, let alone twice. <laughs> he's like, so, I don't I don't know. He's how actually they do so it. big. He's got <laughs> look at his mono region. A hundred, yeah, a hundred thirteen mono well, he's region. Got a, he's got a region. Oh, oh yeah. He's, <laughs> uh, he, I think he still has like fifty plus oh, even yeah. without the region room, though. No, it's like I mean, twenty one stacks on his bloodstone. Even if he like, okay, so they're gonna have to kill him three times essentially because he, he's gonna die once and lose the ages. He's gonna die twice and respawn immediately off of 21 Bloodstone charges and, and then teleport back in, and then they got to kill him a third time. I don't know how. At, I really at, don't. At some point, he also gets a Refresher Orb, and that means he's got oh, double man. BKB, double Shivas, and, you know, of course, all his other spells basically have no cooldown. Well, he's going to go down and take a little bit more farm. Yeah, if you're Vega right now, you push in all the lanes, get the Equilibrium going your way, uh, and they have the Boots of Travel to make it easy. And then they look for their second lane of Rax. This will give Dendi a chance for his refresher to cool down. But I, I still feel this is this is the Aegis and Cheese with which you want to fully break the base. Yep. Satanic oh. now as well. Oh that was goodness. the last item they're waiting for. Now both carries are very close to unkillable. Mm -hmm. Shrek gets another ultimate orb. I, well, an ultimate orb, I should say. I think he's looking for a hex here. He should have one relatively soon. There you go. Ready to go high ground. Let's see if Navi's got the goods. The Mana bond. Burn does so much damage. It's, it's, it's really their <laughs> only other damage besides Chiro. Like, oh, hang on. There's going to be a glimpse back. Boy, <laughs> dog. Oh, hang on. Hook comes in. Manages to catch up Funnick. Helped up on the winner. No, he got, actually got pushed down by the cogs in the low ground. Funnick in so much trouble. Four steps back to the high ground, but the BKBs are out. A boast already down to half health. His BKB is off, as is no one's. There's a disruption once again from Solo that'll keep Pasha out of the line of fire. Now might be the time. I think it's much worse for Havos to be lacking his BKB than it is for Vega. Uh, for no one, excuse me. There's going to be a solo RP. They're going to skewer him back. He has the refresh. We'll go ahead and do some skewers him even further back. Uses the cheese now. Able to bring him down, but no. Oh, beautiful grave. Once again, three man cogs and Vega. Has Navi on the run once again. They do get the Shadow Demon, but they lost Havos in the process. Buybacks on both he and the Disruptor. Havos in art style, ready to come back out. But Pasha still has on. Oh, oh. get me out of here. He's got the Grave and the Heal. Mike should be fine. Ah, uh, there's a well shot splitter. There's going to be a glimpse. No, oh, he BKB dodged it. Yeah. Very nicely done. This rocket's still following Mag. It's going to hurt. Oh, why didn't he just stay near the. He could have just <laughs> stayed near the Shadow, uh, Shadow Priest so he could Grave him. Not sure. Solo, why. barely able to make it away. And so even though they hold ground, they did not get the Aegis. And more importantly, it cost them two buybacks. So Navi's got to make something happen very, very soon. Well, they hold, tower. but it was an expensive hold. Yeah. Uh, just especially Havost having to buy back. Extremely costly. And he needs that Satanic Daedalus. I, again, something I mentioned in the draft, which I think is really showing right now, is how good... Shadow, or uh, Shadow Demon. God, there's so many shadows in this game. Shadow Fiend, <laughs> Shadow Priest, Shadow Demon. It's the Shadow Strat. But uh, yeah, Shadow Demon's purge is just so good against Gyro because of his low attack range. He gets purged, and he just can't actually do anything compared to the Shadow Fiend, who's got a full 600 range to work with, can easily harass heroes back from distance. They hold, but uh, this next hold's going to be the really tough one. And Vega happy to go ahead and reset. Think they'll win on another Aegis? 
I don't know about another age. That I think you want to go while Havos doesn't have buyback. I think what they wait for is just for everyone to respawn, get all the lanes pushed out again, and then just at least gently siege the base. Because they still they still have the Aegis on the Lashrak. Mm -hmm. Um there was the Shadow Fiend who died in the last fight. Yeah. So I think you go with this one. You've got well, actually this one's about to expire. I think you still go. I don't think you wait for the next one, but we'll see. They could look to play it safe. They are they are starting to get to that point where it's like there's not actually that many more items to buy. Lashrak is hex. Refresh. He's six slotted. Yeah, he's six slotted and he can have a refresher in the stash. Yep. So when he respawns, he can get a new BKB and a new Hex, but that's really about it. Four minute respawn on Roshan, so if they want to wait, it'll be a kind of a short one. And nope, they're going to five man, at least for the moment, straight down mid. And once again, they're just so gigantic. And Havos, like, Havos damage output, I mean, it's not what they want it to be, and that's one problem, but the biggest problem is he just is getting lit up by uh, by no one in particular. Like you said, between the Demonic Purge and the Scotty, he just can't move. He can't do anything. Oh, that's true. I, I mentioned the Purge, but yeah, it's also the fact that it's stacking with the Scotty slow, which yep. is just so hard to get anything done. This Hex is big, though. If Havos gets Hexed, as many good defensive supports as Vega has, Navi has nothing, really. The Glimpse won't help against these BKBs, and... Oh, I guess they have... Th oh, Havos, he's out front. Oh, no, this could be it. This oh. Hex could win the game. There it is. There's the hook. All good for Staff. Manages to get him out. And they're going to try to follow this up. I thought for sure they were going to catch him. There's going to be an RP once again only... Oh, he missed the skewer! Now, the fight's going to continue to rage, but not... Oh, the, the miss on the RP. He hits the second RP. Can they follow They're going to get both the Shadow Fiend going down as well as oh, the Shadow man. Demon. The little Shrek also dying, but he's going to be coming back here in just a couple of seconds with that Bloodstone. Excellent hold, though, in the end. They get both cores. They kill off the Shadow Demon. They lose nobody. Aaron, that's the 7,000 gold swing that Navi have been waiting for. It just takes one good RP. The first one wasn't was, even good. No, it was awful. But that's what the refresher is for. <laughs> and they missed the skewer as well. Oh, my. That quick thinky there by Denny. He had the four step out of the cogs ready almost instantly. If they get a range for the hex and then they're able to follow that up, they just lose the fight. Because yep. remember, if Havos dies and it's not with like all of Vega already dead, they probably lose the game because yep. Havos has no buyback available for three full minutes. And at this point, maybe you do wait for the rush. I think Vega are going to think twice after that fight. Yeah, for sure. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who came through that time. Um, like, you, like you mentioned, the four staff was so on point and saved the game for sure. Art style, I, let's be honest, his his kinetic fields and his static storms have been a little shaky this game. That time it was right where it needed to be. Um, Vega hung around way too long. They should have disengaged whenever things didn't go their way. Uh, they tried to be real sneaky, trying to smoke into the, uh, the lane without racks. Then they just hung around and they got, I mean, that was the RP. He didn't need to get three or four. He just needed to get two and it needed to be the right two. And it definitely was. So, uh, like you said, was yep, uh, that's gigantic. Look at the gold graph now and, and the golden XP graphs. Like, the swing is real. <laughs> One more fight and it's going to be almost an even game. Yep. If it goes that way. And that was only three kills. It wasn't even, it's not like they team wiped them or anything. Right. They got the cores, and that's what counts. And Lesh lost a fair amount of Bloodstone charges. Lost six with that death, by the way. Clockwork does have a BKB of his own that is now done. Roshan shouldn't be too far off. Yeah, about 60 seconds on the money. Is, I mean, if you're Vega, now you have to feel like you got the wind knocked out of you a little bit. Other than getting the Aegis, other than just waiting out a Roshan and hoping that if there is a Rosh fight, you prevail. Do you change your approach or you just say, okay, you know what? That didn't work that time. A few mistakes were made. Let's, let's shore it up. Or do you look to take a different approach in terms of trying to crack high ground? Hmm. I think they just need to make absolutely sure that their supports are not getting caught. In that fight, they they ended up getting solo caught in the static storm, and then he got RP'd after that, which is why he couldn't disrupt anybody, and that's basically why they ended up losing the fight. So, I, ideally, I think at this stage of the game, you really want to blink dagger on solo. Then you can sit super far back on the Shadow Demon, whereas right now he's only got the four staff. But I, I think ultimately, at some point, you're going to have to take a risk where you push in all the lanes, you go high ground, and there is a, always a slight chance, if you're slightly out of position, that they, they do get a multiple here RP skewer and, and can turn the fight from there. So, Other big thing is being quicker on the BKBs. If you're Lesh or Shadow Fiend, if he RPs you, but you're BKB, then he can't skewer you back. And if he's not skewering you back, you're, they're not going to find that kind of engagement. So, 
Um, that, again, that's where later on this game, having the refresher on Lashrak just for the BKB refresh is really important so that if he dies, he can buy back, refresh the BKB, uh, and he has it for the second life. But, I mean, well, for now, Vega going to take the Roach. They'll have another Aegis and Cheese, and I, I still think they look to go high ground. It's just, just got to have a better engagement is basically all. Ideally, you start with Mag. Mag gets a jump, and then you find the enemy Magnus, and Mag finds Magnus, <laughs> and then and then it gets a little bit easier from there. Oh, we really haven't seen him. You know, again, it's a small point that we brought up during the draft, but Ma if Mag could hit a rocket flare onto Dindy at the right time and put his blink down, I guess he still has four staff, so it's not as big of a deal. But the uh, refresher is ready to go once again. And they're going to need a big play out of him. He's but. got 5k gold, by the way. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's a really big item that Dundee could buy at this point. BKB probably is, but if he buys a BKB, he will not have buyback. So he's deciding not to do it for right now. And Avos farming this out. His damage really beginning to show itself considerably now. I mean, it's been high all game, but he's critting for about 1,100. I'm pretty sure that's what I just saw. Of course, not exact. Oh, wow. I just heard a glimpse. And I don't think it did anything. Uh, glimpsed Mag back a little bit. Maybe worried he was lining up a hook shot. Uh, Navi. Still on the defensive. Vega trying to find a way in. Yeah, just slow, steady siege. They, they don't really want to commit their heroes up the high ground yet. They're waiting for a good initiate. Now, you can't... Oh, there's a scepter on the Nyx, by the way. Oh. Yep, he's underground, right between the racks. Oh, that's actually so amazing. Yep. But the, don't leave the base, Navi. Then you can't use this Nyx to his, his full stick set. <laughs> By the way, look at the range of that impale. Yep. Oh, my goodness. That's just insane. Oh, I, I actually jumped up just as I was. <laughs> Lurker. This is incredible. Oh, RP! Got two! That's no one and Pasha. There's a disruption on the no one. Pasha's going to be the one caught out. Here comes Mag. Beautiful grave. Pasha does not have the Aegis. Not going to need it. Mag's going to end up... Oh. And Pasha down as well. He's down for 35 seconds. They got the Disruptor. No one still alive does have the Aegis. And Solo is actually going to be caught out. He's going to be forced to use his Ghost Scepter to try to stay alive. The buybacks are coming. They really want to turn this one. Teeping bottom is the Shadow Demon. They're fighting without him, and they're trying to break the base right now. This is a dangerous move by Vega. Could end up costing them. Funix working on Seam on the backside. Rocket's oh, gonna hit Pasha! Oh no, this could be a dose. The double skewer back to the tier fours. Pasha may fall here. Avos trying to finish the job. He's rejoining so much on the Octarine. <laughs> they get him. He's dead for 70 seconds. That is a really long time by Lashrak Bloodstone standard. Now no one may get caught. Dendi, unfortunately, is currently lacking a skewer. He does have an Ooh. RP. He's thinking about it. They have not cracked these racks. Vega, you got a bag. There it is. Beautiful play. Uh, the follow-up is there. Disruption from Solo, not going to be enough. No one comes out, still has the Aegis, still doing damage. But they're able to kite it out. The is going to be careful. They're doing such a good job kiting him out slowly but surely. Aegis is going to be popped. Funnick is in position to re-engage immediately. Oh. Actually mistimed it. And that will allow him to escape with his life. What a hold by Navi. That was absolutely sensational. The Lurker next man doing work there towards the end. Not really. That, that was mostly about the Dendi RP, but it, it was, it's fun to see that, that item in action. That Lurker Nyx, 24 to 29, and suddenly a game that we thought, I think most of us would have thought, uh, was reaching towards its final moments. We're at 60 minutes in. The gold graph has, I mean, not completely turned upside down, but damn well close enough. 15k gold swing at about the last 10 to 12 minutes, and the experience is damn near even. I want to point out, there's a refresher on the Wyvern now, so they have double Winter's Curse, oh, man. as well as double RP, and the double Skewer. <laughs> oh, this is scary. Uh, Dendi played that fight so well, though. He gets the first two here RP, one of them gets disrupted, the other ends up getting picked off, and then he does the double Skewer back to finish off the, uh, the Lashrak after he bought back, which... He went from, I think he had, what, 21 Bloodstone charges? Now he's down to six. Yep. That means he actually will need his buy. The next time he dies, he's going to need the buyback, most likely. Yeah, he bought if he back, does again. too. Yeah, he already bought back, so his buyback's on cooldown for five straight minutes. Yeah, that, that, was, that was just such a great double skewer after the buyback, completely opening this game up. And now I think if you're Vega, you start to just worry a little bit psychologically. Like, how do we break the base? We thought we had them, but every time we go in now... 
Dendi finds two. There's yep. the skewers back. They they have no way to prevent that play aside from a disruption, but you can only disrupt one. And that's right. where and in that case, again, Vega getting both cores caught together. That that's something that has to be avoided. And that's something worth saying. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't s well no, I guess there's no way. The decision to disrupt they, uh, no one as opposed to Pasha whenever that initial RP he, hit? Yeah, he did have the Aegis, so maybe you want to disrupt the Lesh. They were also on top of each other, so right. it's one of those, like, maybe he's trying to click on Lesh but couldn't or right. just misclicked. I, I guess I, w I would agree with you and lead slightly towards disrupting no one, but I, I still think it would have been a tough fight for Vega. Immediately, like, Shadow Fiend's pulled all the way back, and uh, I don't, they were also a little indecisive. They bought back right away in Lesh, and... Then they sort of backed off, even as he was TPing in. He, he went in before his team and got caught a bit out of position. It was just a very chaotic fight in general. These things happen in Dota. <laughs> Once in a while. Well, for the second time in as many series, Na'Vi finds themselves in an hour-long marathon game two. And just like last time, they have a chance to close it out 2-0 and really solidify their position atop their group. Solo is in no man's land. That's brave. And he's going to be found out behind that. There was a hook to come in, and Mag BKB'd. What was the plan here? There was just Mag and Solo. I guess they didn't think all of Na'Vi was there. They're lucky they got away without both of them being dead. It's not often you see a BKB at a 10-second duration at 63 minutes in. Yeah. He's only just picked this up. And 2,700 uh, gold still in the bank. Oh, Funnick is hunting. This could be big on Pasha, trying to force something out here, and, well, I guess he did. Forces out the BKB. I'm not sure if he was down to five seconds already, uh, but it is now. If he was sitting at six, I'm pretty sure he was down there a while ago. I think Funnick is going Octarine as well. This this could be very interesting with how much damage the Mana Burn's doing. Na'Vi holding it together against all odds. Last hits are pretty absurd, by the way. We've got about... 1,500 collectively across the, actually more than that, across the top three. Net worth, of course, we've got two well over the 30K mark now. Shadow Fiend is not far away from that mark as well. Still a few things that could be replaced, I suppose. He's got a Demon Edge and would imagine he's going to go, I mean, he's got a Demon Edge. What do you think he's going to pick up next? Hmm. At this point... Do you consider a rapier? I, I, that feels, like, I, I against think, the gyro? Yeah, I mean, gyro could still go butterfly, so I think you have to go MKB here. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, I'm just like, at this point, it, it's, I feel like Vega had, uh, you hate to be a Monday morning quarterback and, and be like, well, okay, it's, it's real easy to see maybe something could have gone different, but there was a time when they got very passive and decided to, not Guys, really push the issue with an agent. Yeah, they got one lane of Rex, and then they did back to farm. Yep, and I wonder if they're not kicking themselves Here's the smoke, though. Vega looking to make their move bottom. Can they find the opening? Sonico's here with the Winter's Curse in the tree line. He's got the four staff as well, but the oh, hook starts hook. it off. Hook on art style. He's going to be in some trouble to begin with. Dindy BKBs goes in, gets two. RP once again got solo plus no one. Funnick. Trying to make his way out. In the meantime, Dindy resetting. No one just teeing off. Havost caught and blown up. 120 seconds, he's gone. There's going to be another hook. And suddenly Vega, who had to have felt just an awful feeling in the pit of their stomach, they get Na'Vi outside of their base, and now it's not so big of a problem. There's the Hex solos there. Triple kill for Pasha. That's four down. Who's got buyback? Not going to be a, never mind, the gyro does have buyback indeed. That in and of itself is a pretty big deal. Outside of that, they do have Dindy, they do have Funic. There will be no art style, there will be no Winter Wyvern. I don't know if these two can hold it by themselves. You, you have one RP, you have a gyro who has one damage item in a Satanic. I, honestly, I think Vega just keep on going here. The yep, they have to. Lestrax buyback has cooled down as well, so he can afford to take this risk. Vega at this point, they're in position to close out Navi and tie this up, make it a one-to-one -one series. The Lurker Nick's off the mark with the first stun. Now he's going to reset a bit. Solo trying to catch him out. He burrows under. Mana Burn comes through, but Vega just looking for... No, actually not looking Clips for on a Solo. But probably should be. Disruption there. They should lose the range racks any moment. Solo getting stunned. Grave, though. What a timing. Mag back in. Catches a Bose, where's the damage? They don't have anyone there doing damage. No one has to prioritize his targets. In the meantime, a Bose 
chasing Mag back out of the base. They do manage to bring down both sets of racks. That in and of itself makes this worthwhile. A Vos can they catch it from behind? There's going to be an RP. RP, but Dindy just cannot stand the pain as no one is giving him the slaps and making him cry all the way back to the fountain. A double kill for him, and Funic almost became a triple kill after the raises. He actually buys an MKB out of the enemy's base. Wyvern does catch him, but no disruption once again. And oh, oh again. there's the grave. What are you going to do? You can't kill him. Unbelievable. These graves, the disruptions. Navi have to be beyond frustrated at this point. That was a dieback on Dendi. And Havost forced to buy back, although he did not die again. I, I think if you're Vegana, you go heal, and then you go top. You know that there's no buyback at this point on the, the Magnus or the Gyrocopter for yep. five and a half minutes. And if you kill one, the game's over. Got to check the Roche pit. And they may just wait this out. No one, eh, I mean, he's got a Satanic, so he can certainly go to work. Speaking of go to work, he got the job done. And I can, I'm calling it right now. Uh, my, without a doubt, my MVP for the game, Solo. Solo's disruptions have. Hey, hey. This guy has a history, man. Oh, wait, I know. wait until they've won to call it. But yeah, if they win and with the way he's played, I would fully agree. I mean, uh, <laughs> MVP, win, lose, or draw. He has been so impactful this game. He really has. Well, I guess if they lose, he's probably been the MVP for Navi. So either, <laughs> either way, at this point, Solo's the MVP. Okay, uh, I'm with you, man. All right, Roche down in a in a hurry. Aegis actually goes on the clockwork, and then then it's going to be there's, dazzle. There's just no room on the Shadow Fiend. Rapier, the, the track at this point. Havost being Havost, just Havost things. Rapier bot on the way to. I mean, why not? At this point, this is the only item you can go for. Yep. Anything else? Like a butterfly is not really going to help you. Shadow Fiend already has MKB. You have to kill the enemy supports. Ideally, at least one core in your BKB, or you're losing the fight. It's a risky item, but it's a, an absolutely necessary one at this stage. But bear in mind that even should Navi win a fight, there are four out of five buybacks up on Vega. So Navi need to win probably two fights to turn this game. At a minimum. And <laughs> Lashrak is getting the refresher now. This is a seven-slotted Lashrak. Six, he's getting a, a tier four item every, every 10 minutes, which is not the most farmed any hero's ever been, but it's damn close considering the amount of fighting. 36,000 net worth on this Lashrac. I just saw a crit for 1,700. That's legit. That's not even the Lashrac. Yep. <laughs> Imagine if you could crit with your nukes. No. Oh, my God. That would be so dirty. Maybe a patch in the future. I remember when they said there, there was no way there'd be CDR in Dota. And that's definitely changed. Here we are. Vega ready to try and pull the upset here in game two. They dropped game one. Want to walk away with the split. There's going to be an RP. Best RP in the game. Brings it back into the static storm. And the follow-up is finally there for Navi. Oh, my God. He got the second one. There's the cooldown. The rapier is going in four dead. They want no one as well. They're going to find him, too. That shadow beats down. And five heroes dead through the ages. They're looking to bring back down another time. They'll get him as well. Ruskies. Jesus Did the caps with the best RPs we've seen all game. Caps it with a double kill of his own. Buybacks are up, and what an unmitigated catastrophe for this Vegas squad. Practically <laughs> on a victory march, they run headlong into a uh -oh. Dindy RP, followed by... This, this is trouble, though, Aaron. Oh, uh, the sting they, of a Rapier. They have no RPs, and Vega bought back four out of five heroes. They may end up losing this game anyway, but here we go again. <laughs> oh, my God. Dendi, he, wish he, he wishes he could buy another RP at this point. He can't, and Vega... They're marching in. Dude, the panic that Vega has to be feeling right now. Here we go, Funix. Oh, he got hexed. Funix hexed out. Sonoko's right there. BKB up on no one. Avos trying to go toe to toe. Can't do it. Rapier or not, no one is gigantic. Funix comes back out. He actually bounces into the cog. Knocked down to the low ground. In the meantime, didn't he able to force that back to safety? Kinetic Field is there. But can they get past you? BKB's out of it. Oh, they got him. The crit. It's a dieback. They the might actually build a turn this game. Havos is just going to town. That rapier and Dandy with the skewer on the mag. Got it. Oh, good hook. Is it? Havost is waiting for this. He's going to look for no one instead. This oh, is a dieback on the Shadow Fiend as well. A double dieback on the core. kill. You run the hell down mid and you do it now, but the throne is under siege. It's about down to a third HP. Someone's got to try and hold this off. If Navi wins this game, oh my god.
A hundred seconds we've got down. I don't know if they could actually push though. They have a they have a serious infestation of creeps on their hands. <laughs> I, I oh they're actually leaving Hobos back. So yeah, they're not even gonna try. He he can be a Tia though. He's he got BOTs, they have to make sure the creep doesn't die. My goodness my word. Oh my word. Oh my Lanta. They to have our good friends I They have eighty seconds with no shadow fiend. That is I really feel like Vega need both cores of this. Like, one of them yep. is especially the Lesh. The Lesh does not match up as well 1v1 against the Gyro. He's much better just kind of cleaning everyone up. And here, Navi come down mid. This is a lot of this is up to the clockwork. Mag has to stall this push as long as possible. Do they just go straight thrown? I think you go thrown. Yep, I think so too. You kill this just tier the 3 and you go, go thrown. There it is, there it is. No, oh, no, they're stopping at racks. They're stopping at racks. It seems like they're debating it. They're kind of moving forward. Maybe they just want to get the safe racks trade. They're going to cave in mid. Still 50 I, seconds. 50 seconds is such a long time. I, I think they're realizing that they can just go for it. Here we go. Onto the tier fours. This is where it gets really interesting. And power rapier. No, they're going to have, they're going to blow the glyph. And there's going to be a hook in. Mag coming in, trying to make something happen. Static Storm's on point. Can't do anything. There's going to be a skewer out by BKB Dindy. In the meantime, skewers won back. RP on the Basha. Beautiful frame once again, though. It's going to allow him to buy some more time. Disruption's there. Havos comes out of it. Do they have the damage? Will it be a rapier on the ground? No. Wyvern there. Able to bail him out at least momentarily. One tier four is down. Art Style's about to drop. The damage just not there yet. They got 10 seconds. 10 seconds to try to do as much damage as they can. But they're probably going to want to bail out. Do they go for the throw? They're looking for it's here. Zoning everyone back. The Lurker in the front line. So both Disruption. That gets disrupted for now. But I don't know if they can kill him out. They want the heal bomb to come through. Now the Shadow Fiend. Oh! Rapier down. Rapier's on the ground. He's got buyback. Everybody buys back. It's Navi's turn to throw bodies at Rax. Here we go. Round two. Fight. Let's see if they've got the goods. That's a full team buyback. Dindy up, does not have an RP, does have a refresh. If he's able to get back in the meantime, no one caught out. There's the RP after the refresh. No one is down. I cannot seconds. believe it. Navi have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat while halfway down the throat. And they take the series. Where? Two to zero. What the hell is that? What a game! <sighs> what a game! That is a that is a one in a million. And they they already had one of these games earlier today in their last series. What a <laughs> what an absolute what an absolute dream day for Navi. I uh, they could have easily ended up two and four today. Yeah.